So we spoke a bit about nanite, so the, the, the magic behind the, the virtualized geometry system, but can you speak a little bit to Lumen uh, and in general what it takes to dynamically light in all the complicated ways, the faces, the scenes that we discussed? Like, What are some interesting things to you that made the magic of it happen? Lumen is a system for global illumination, meaning it's supposed to calculate the interaction of light uh, with the entire scene in a, in a way that mimics reality. Um, the first generation of engines that did lighting just said, well, the light casts light and the surfaces it hits are lit and the surfaces it doesn't directly hit are dark and uh, that's just all of the techniques we have. So you'd have an area that wasn't hit by any light being completely black. But in reality, light bounces around the entire scene um, dynamically. When a light hits a red wall, then uh, most of the uh, blue and green light is absorbed, but the red light reflects off and now is hitting other things. And so if you have a red wall with a white floor, light is bouncing off of the red wall into the floor, and now the floor is being turned red. And so the entire bouncing of light around the scene through multiple bounces is the critical challenge to solve here. Mm -hmm. And um, again, laws of physics are known, and so the complete solution to this it was written down in the 1950s, I think. Um, the the real magic here in Lumen is this system that uh, Daniel Wright developed over the course of many years um, based on ideas formed over a longer period of time to calculate the way lighting bounces around at different scales, um, ranging from you know the scale of miles or kilometers uh, down to the scale of uh, pixels and millimeters. Um, and to not only calculate it at each level, but integrate it seamlessly at each level um, to give the appearance of completely seamless and accurate lighting. And previous techniques were highly specialized, and RS had to make a decision for each light about exactly what it did. The goal, uh, you know, and a lot of the practice with the night now is you build a scene, you place lights in it, and it just works um, to make it that much easier. Yeah, I mean, we're watching, so I recommend people go through this blog post. Like, look at that. So dynamically, I mean, we should say that, so there's the indoors and the outdoors, and to be able to dynamically compute the, the impact of outdoor light, just look at that. Look at how gorgeous that is. Yeah. Just the lighting, like, look, we're looking now at an image of a cave. So external light lighting this, the the intricate complexity of a, insides of a cave. Yeah, look that's at right. that. Light in the real world goes through a lot of bounces and the effects of it are very, very subtle, but when they're not there, you miss them. Often a person can't point out why a scene is wrong, but they know it looks wrong. And it's the lack of the subtle lighting cues that we're seeing here. And, you know, for great, because we mentioned for great video games, but also for great films, lighting can make a film. And we're just looking at sort of a very dramatic lighting of a scene. Like imagine stepping into the scene, at your, it's exciting, it's terrifying, and all of that has to do with light. The interplay between light and darkness. It's incredible. It's really, truly, truly incredible. Like light is everything. And then to put the power of the tooling in the hands of an artist, that is really special. Yeah, the industry's gone through a massive evolution and there's so many supporting systems to make this awesome. Um, and always artists. <laughs> We're looking at reflections on smooth surfaces. Oh boy. Oh boy, look at how gorgeous that is. Yeah, that's right. Wow. And you have to appreciate the algorithms are doing quite a lot here. Yeah. Uh, you can have a, you know, a scene with a huge number of not just lights, but also bright objects who reflect light off of them. Every one of those has to be captured in the reflections in order for it to be realistic. And you, know, you can't calculate every photon in the scene. And so you need really detailed approximations. And that's the field of computer graphics. It's about increasingly effective approximations of the laws of physics, which are just totally intractable. But the result of that graphics is a feeling, is an experience by the viewer. And it's just to me, yeah. As a fan of, well, let's say beauty in the world, it's it's exciting that we can create that synthetically, artificially, uh, via graphics. And that just, it blows wide open the possibilities of storytelling. 